ladies and gentlemen, Jack Phillips from the ACT Party. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jack. Kia ora. I nice. don't believe we've met before. No, but there's first time for everything. There is indeed. Um, ACT are doing well in the polls, aren't they? Yes, yes we are. What do you put that down to? Oh, I put it down to um, a lack of leadership from the government. Um, uh, national being all over the place, uh, not knowing if they're coming or going or what policies they want to settle on. Um, and I also think it's because New Zealanders have had enough, particularly in the rural sector. I, you know, I grew up rurally, um, and times are really, really tough out in the countryside, like um, unbelievably tough. And I mean, part of that's attributed to the RMA um, making any projects on, on land a ridiculous and arduous, if not impossible, task. Um, and then the other thing is the mental health crisis that is plaguing the country. Um, COVID has added to that, um, but it's, it's part of the reason why I'm running. Um, I've had first-hand negative experiences with the current mental health system, uh, and I believe that ACT and individual uh, driving of, of care and choice is, is the way to go forward. Uh, and also, uh, hashtag mental health awareness. Uh, mm -hmm. It is mental health awareness week as well. Um, you, you, so you think the, the, res the response in the polls is, is due to the other parties not being uh, as, as effective as they could be, as opposed to acts apparent alignment with fringe issues and, 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 for example, gun lobbyists? I don't think they're fringe at all. I think most New Zealanders uh, like the way the laws were back when we had the, the strongest and uh, best gun laws in the world. Um, you know, a, a crazy person that comes from overseas and the police fail their already mandated checks and he gets a hold of a lot of weapons. Um, not just guns, by the way, he had access to a vehicle, potentially explosives. So when someone uh, with an agenda comes to do a crazy act uh, and you blame uh, thousands and thousands of everyday New Zealanders who are equally horrified at uh, the disgusting um, actions of this, this, this madman. Um, yeah, I think everyday New Zealanders have had enough. Do you believe that some of the candidate uh, views and thus party views uh, of the ACT Party align with the likes of ACT on campus or wider New Zealand? Oh, good, ACT on campus. I was waiting for this to come up. <laughs> See, um, <laughs> Okay, so I, I myself have been involved in, in ACT on campus. Um, I have a club at Massey that is currently on hiatus. Um, there's been an investigation into um, quite, quite a distressing incident, um, and that's un unfortunately not, not been released uh, to the public, um, the full, full documentation of the... But um, yes, uh, youth and uh, politics uh, tend to be breeding grounds for, for negative behaviour. So that's why when uh, I joined Young Act, the first thing we did uh, was starting to work on a wellbeing policy and a safety officer team. Um, unfortunately, this was never completed uh, before the, the incident took place. Um, and that's all I'm at liberty to say about this. I, I, to be honest, I wasn't aware of any incident. Oh, I was okay. Sorry. simply <laughs> asking if oh, the okay. views aligned with younger Act supporters yes. and wider New Zealand. Yes, they do. Very good. Um, but talking, talking, about, okay. talking about universities, um, there is a, a, a policy of ACT. They aim to withhold funding from universities that restrict freedom of speech. Yes, so I was recently a student at Mass University and our vice chancellor uh, came out with a new policy. Uh, the university can, uh, at a uh, click of a finger, a snap of a pen, uh, shut down any, any event that, even if it's been pre-approved, um, if the views are... Uh, start going contrary to whatever the uh, Vice-Chancellor or her representative thinks. And I think that's totally wrong. I think universities as public institutions have a, have a place in our society as free speech uh, bastions. And uh, when bureaucrats and people uh, in positions of, of leadership, they think they can uh, overwrite what other people say. Like, I'll give you an example. Don Brash originally came to speak at Massey University um, a few years ago now. Um, about economics. He was invited, uh, he was, you know, former, former head of the Reserve Bank in New Zealand, and it became a political issue. Um, and he didn't want to speak about politics. And then, you know, the, the great people at the Massey Politics Society and local ACT um, kicked up a, a hiss and a roar, and Don Brash came, and nothing bad happened. 
Uh, so I don't know why people are so so afraid of uh, ideas. Um, but I, I guess it comes down to the definition of free speech, doesn't it? Well, yeah, we have a Bill of Rights. I think that, you know, if that doesn't explain it, I don't know what will. Fair enough. Um, does that mean, though, that come October 18, if ACT uh, f uh, are part of a coalition government, that Mass University would see a restriction of funding straight away because they've demonstrated this sort of, what you might see as editorial control? Well, well I mean, that would be like hindsight um, an action of, of policy. No, look, um, it's not one of our major policy issues. Um, I think that when we go into coalition agreements, uh, I think uh, uh, guns, uh, I think mental health, and I think the RMA are our three biggest issues. So anything beyond that is, uh, you know, to be negotiated. So, I mean, that leads me on to my, to my final question, really, and then I'm maybe get Jimmy's yeah, got one. some uh, one on the phone. Um, what will ACT do for Palmerston North? if they manage to hold sway in a coalition government or even be a stronger voice in opposition? So for PAMI, um, regulations have really, really, really stifled the housing industry. I know it's atrocious everywhere in New Zealand. Um, except Christchurch, I was reading an article um, and stuff today about how um, through earthquake exemptions and stuff, um, they don't actually use, have to use the RMA at the moment. Um, so repealing and replacing the RMA is a great way to start building houses because if the market was already indicating that they want to build X number of houses because that's what the demand is. So let yeah. people build. Yeah. Uh, Jack, just quickly, uh, on current polling, it looks like ACT uh, will have a few MPs in yes. Parliament. Um, someone Eight was or just, nine. Yeah, someone's just wondering if you could perhaps tell us a bit about, we haven't got much time, so say numbers two, three, and four. OK, uh, Deputy Leader Brooke Van Velden, fantastic. She wrote the End of Life Choice Act. Um, I hugely respect her. Uh, she is extremely competent um, around mental health policy, and you know that's all you really need to know about her. She's a fantastic, fantastic leader um, and policy writer. Uh, whew, can I talk about my favourite person, Mark Cameron, um, our rural spokesperson? Mark is an awesome, awesome trooper, um, and he he will likely get into Parliament. He's a uh, number. Off the top of my head, number seven, I think. Who's uh, three and four, though? Oh, uh, three and four. Um, oh, my gosh. Nicole McKee, uh, and she is a former uh, gun safety inspector um, from uh, the Hutt Valley. Um, she's really, really, really nice, um, fantastic person. Uh, her policy interests are around hunting, fishing, game, but also her background in, um, in educa education, law, legal issues, you know. And number four? Number four, Chris Bailey. Um, he wants to bring back charter schools, uh, and he's an educator and a small business owner himself. So marvellous. Uh, just into the quick fire. Uh, do you support the cannabis legalisation and control? Yes. Do you support end of life choice? Yes. And can you demonstrate any trail or sign? I call Jack Tuckle Ingwa. Uh, beyond that, no. I'm fortunately, it's. Uh, I was supposed to be learning it this year, but uh, COVID ruined my my Maori experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Phillips. Thank you for having me.